The sea is our commercial lifeline. It makes our world go round. Many people think seafaring is far removed from our daily life. But in fact, 90% of the world's goods are transported by sea. Across the world, there are 53,000 ships and one and a half million seafarers. The merchant shipping contributes $380 billion to the world economy. Seafaring is important, but it is difficult and dangerous. The maritime industry is essential to global trade, but it is driven by harsh competition and riddled with exploitation. The International Transport Workers Federation, a worldwide union body representing millions of transport workers, is best known for its groundbreaking work to eliminate the exploitation of seafarers and for its flag of convenience or FOC campaign. The campaign targets ship owners who use flags of convenience to avoid national legislation and to squeeze costs by keeping seafarers' wages, living and working conditions unacceptably low. A ship's flag shows the state where it is registered. If a ship is owned by a company operating out of one country, but is registered in another, then that ship flies a flag of convenience. For example, this ship is registered in Panama but it is owned by a Japanese company, so it flies an FOC. Its registered owners and managers are in Singapore, and it is operated from Thailand, classified in Japan, and insured in London. Its crews are from Philippines and Indonesia. 70% of the world's shipping fleet is registered under flags of convenience or is flagged out. FOCs are attractive to ship owners who want the cheapest and least regulated way of operating their vessel. Registering a ship outside its country of ownership means that ship owners do not have to abide by national laws governing wages, working conditions or workers' rights. The Flag of Convenience campaign is a system used by ship owners to avoid um, taking their legal and trade union responsibilities. So they flag vessels uh, owned in one country into countries uh, like the Bahamas or Liberia that use uh, their registers to make money. And ultimately that's to avoid paying taxes, uh, to avoid traditional maritime countries, long history of maritime legislation, and to avoid their responsibilities to employ seafarers from those countries. Ultimately, um, seafarers can be uh, vulnerable in this system because they have nobody to turn to no unions um, and no authorities that can provide them assistance. Can you please check the ship? Because I'm just concerned about my friend who's working there. I was unfairly dismissed from work. My contract was cancelled without any possibility of defending myself. We are out of food and our salary is delayed for three months. They want to send me home ASAP. ITF Seafarers and Dockers Union want to protect seafarers' working conditions, to promote the need for a genuine link between owner and flag, to target an unfair system where the balance of power is unequal and which facilitates exploitation by allowing ship owners to pay and treat seafarers as they deem fit. Significantly, over the last 60 years, the ITF's work through the FOC campaign has improved conditions overall for seafarers. This has happened via ITF approved agreements, a unique set of international minima for wages and conditions. 
ITF Seafarers Union bargain with global ship owner bodies and negotiate with the owners of FOC ships to conclude such ITF approved agreements for seafarers. The International Bargaining Forum, a unique negotiating body, was established for this purpose in 2003. ITF Seafarers and Dockers Union supports seafarers on FO ships by participating in a network of inspectors to investigate suspect ships and win back pays for seafarers. Helping to win compensation if seafarers have suffered an injury on board. Participating in practical solidarity action around the FOC campaign. In 2011, ITF inspectors visited a total of 8,078 ships. The Flag of Convenience campaign resulted in a total of nearly 25.8 million US dollars being recovered in back wages and compensation for crews. The number of onboard jobs covered by ITF agreements was 209,553. ITF seafaring unions have successfully lobbied international organisations including the International Labour Organisation. A new Maritime Labour Convention will enter into force in August 2013 after a groundbreaking ITF campaign. This has become known as the Seafarers Bill of Rights. Seafarers and dockers have always worked together to improve conditions. The ITF has a parallel campaign focused specifically on establishing minimum standards for workers' rights and health and safety in all ports. The FOC and POC campaigns strengthen each other. Solidarity between seafarers and dockers has been at the root of success of the ITF's FOC campaign. Other transport workers Truckers and railway workers transporting freight in, out and around ports are just as important, which is why the ITF is growing this campaign amongst all its affiliates in the global transport chain. Union strength has raised wages, improved conditions and defended workers' rights. Through collective bargaining and solidarity actions, ITF union power is bringing justice and dignity to the seas redressing the balance of power in an industry that's vital to us all. Help us spread the word about this campaign. It doesn't just affect seafarers, it affects everyone, the world over. Be part of something big.